this is Leah from Mommyish, and today I'm going to give a tutorial on how to use your Puppet Warp tool um, to create realistic uh, drop shadows for dynamic elements like the string, for example. So um, first I'm just going to show you how it works, not on a layout, but just the element by itself. So I have a little background layer. I'm going to lock that, and this is our string layer. So I'm going to put string, top, all right. Um, I'm going to duplicate this and be silly and I'm going to call this string shadow. So the one on top is top, the one below is shadow. All right. The first thing I like to do is I do a color overlay of black and then I'll just rasterize the layer style. So that gives us this. All right. Now our puppet warp tool. All right. Um, don't be afraid when you hit puppet warp, you get all these really neat polygons and things and you're probably like, okay, what next? Well, what next is we get to add little pinpoints. I like to add pinpoints and I like to think of them as anchors in a way. Um, like I want to anchor this spot right here. How this works is like, let's say I anchored here and then I add another pinpoint over here. When I move this, it's going to anchor. See how it's pivoting on that other spot, right? Okay. So uh, I'm going to kind of get that back to the way it was. I'm going to delete this anchor to delete anchors. Just right click or not anchors, but pins and just choose delete pin like that. I like um, seeing the mesh. You might want to hide the mesh. I particularly don't like to. I like knowing where I can and cannot add things. So um, what's especially neat about this tool is that whenever we have pieces of string and things like that that come out, they have their own little mesh. So I can individually move pieces. I'm adding little pins. So let's say I can move this spot right here. I can move this spot right here. The reason why this moved is because I haven't anchored this area like I should have. So I'm going to move this over here and, and, and put a little anchor. All right. But now you see, I was able to <laughs> move this and this. Now that doesn't make sense to have the shadow going that way. It makes more sense to have a shadow going more like this way. But you see how you could like, you could take it anywhere you want. Whee! I'm like, I'm dancing. I'm dancing. Okay. Sorry. I'm okay. It's, it's later in the afternoon. <laughs> and I'm, I just had another cup of coffee, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you could even make this part curve. How you would do that is by adding another point, let's say toward the middle, right there, and kind of drag it up like that, and then bring that part down, and now we kind of have a curve. So there we go. Um, I want this to, oops, wrong one. I put two, that's what happens when you put two anchors too close together delete the pin. I already had one there. All right, there we go. I'm just going to move it like that just a little bit. All right. Now this big, big area over here, we have this spot. I'm going to drag like that. I have this spot. I'm going to just kind of pick a, a little zone like that. I always like having areas that are still like flat because I like to think of them as like flat on the surface. Um, so this is going to be a little bit but then these pinpoint areas are where we're still touching. Then it goes up off the paper. This one goes off up off the paper. This definitely does just like that. So I'm going to apply it. Um, and again, like you can see that's before after. So now we have this really cool shadow. Well, now I like to add a blur. Um, you can use whatever type of blurs that you typically use for your shadowing. I use this one. Um, is it Gaussian? Gaussian? I don't know. I should probably listen to see how to say it so I don't sound like an idiot. Um, I have it set on 5.3. Um, you know, the smaller it is, the sharper and more, you know, detailed. The larger it is, the more poofy it is. Poofies. We don't want it to be too poofy. So um, 5.3, I liked. Then I like to turn down. Um, I change my blending mode usually to a linear burn. Then I change my fill or your opacity, whichever, like that. And just like that, we have this very realistic shadow. So would we rather have this shadow, or, well, it doesn't look terrible, does it? I mean, it's just a typical flat drop shadow, bam. Or this one. Yeah, 
that one's cooler. Come on. Admit it. It's okay. It's okay because it's me. You can be like, yes, Leah. Way, way cooler. All right. So um, I have a layout that I've been working on. And as you see, I have this string here. I've added drop shadows on mostly everything. You know, just the typical ones, not special ones, but the string has a special drop shadow. I actually have it going underneath this and then over the top. Um, how I accomplish that is I first have this string, these two string layers, the string and the shadow, under the card. And then I duplicated it and put it over the top of the card. And then I clip it to this card layer. So you'll see that if I'm, I'm you know, I move this, it's, it's staying. Uh, <laughs> it's staying where it should be. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So it's there. I can turn it off. Oops. Wrong one. Wrong one. I'm sorry. It's right here. See? Yay. All right. Um, so yeah, I just clip it to it. Um, now it will look weird if you add a regular drop shadow to the layer it's clipped to. For example, like that, because then it makes this string part look like it's, it's a freaking um, I don't know what. Well, you can fix that by just unclipping that top part layer and keeping the, uh, the shadow. You want to make sure you keep the shadow clipped to it. Anyway, whatever. Um, so that's that. Now I'm going to show you how I do it live action sort of way. I have this element here that I have yet to add a shadow to. I'm again, I'm going to duplicate the layer, the one underneath it. I change the color to black. I simplify or rasterize that layer. All right. Next I go to edit puppet warp. And I'm, since half of it's hidden, I'm not going to, ah, cancel. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. All I'm going to worry about is anchoring this initial area. I want to anchor here, here, and I'm going to anchor the lower part here. So basically this area is being told to stay put. And then the areas I'm going to play with are going to be over here. So first off, this little branch. I'm just going to kind of move it like that. I'm going to move um, this branch a little. This one gets her own little anchor point too. Don't argue with me. <laughs> Hers is going to go down that way, I think. We're going to just like that. This little area here even can get its... Uh, look. Alright, sorry. Um, <laughs> too excited doing stuff like this. I just deleted the anchor point and I am going to just mess around a little bit. I'm not so sure about the shadow on this one. So I'm going to take this anchor point and move it around a little bit. I think I'm going to add a point here and I'm going to like kind of drag or darn it. I keep thinking I'm selecting the, the pinpoint, but I wasn't. There we go. More like that. And get that like that. We'll see. There. All right. And apply. So d do not panic. It looks a little weird right now, but that's okay. It's weird like me. You still like me, right? So you'll still like this. All right. Um, I'm going to do a color overlay. Instead of doing a black, um, I know I already did it once. I'm doing it again. I'm going to choose a dark brown that's kind of tonal to the layout. So rasterize that layer style. Um, filter. It's already at the blur percentage point or whatever that I want. Then I'm going to change my blending mode to the linear burn. And then I can just play with the setting like that. And now we have a uh, more realistic shadow. I think it might be a bit dark. There. There. Now it looks a little, it looks a little better. So um, I think that's more fun and it does give you the effect that this other spot here is definitely kind of rising way up off the paper. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. Adding, warping. I might not be the best at it. There are some people out there that are amazing at this, but I don't, um, I don't get to scrap as much anymore. I'll be honest with you. The times that I scrap are usually when I'm doing this. So, um, I also want to show you some, one other thing. I'm going to use this flower as the example. Um, People tend not to stray very far when they're doing their drop shadows, okay? You you double click on your layer, you add your drop shadow. 
typically um, your contour is set to a linear contour, just straight. Um, and you might play around with your, your burn or whatever. Um, I have it on a dark brown color. Um, and you might play with your distance, like, whee! Uh, you know, whatever. That's cool. Um, and the sizing for sharper or whatever. But what I want to show you right now, and I'm going to do it with a, at a size zero so you can see, is I want you to play with your contour. All right. So what you do is you're going to click on contour, and I just want you to add one little point, and you're just going to drag it. Just like that. Like, just drag it a little bit. It's not a big deal. To kind of make a, a curve. And then hit OK. Right now, you can't really tell what it does because I have it set, the size set as, um, you know, zero. But if I do this, you'll see that there's a difference between this curve and that. See how that did? All right. We're going to, I'm going to do it again, go back to my custom one that I had and just watch, watch as I add the curve. It, it changes the detail of the outer part to not be as um, prominent. You can add more points to create different types of uh, curves and whatnot to create a very unique shadow effect. That's not just like this, it's like the image blurred, but actually to give it a little more depth and dimension. So have fun. I want you guys to try this on your next layout when you're playing with your drop shadow. Play with the contour. Um, if you really like one of the contours you've created, um, just go ahead and whenever you do it, save it as um, new and then name it. Like um, you could say this is flower contour or flat flower shadow uh, contour. Okay. And uh, that's it. So that's, that's my tutorial. <laughs> you can use your puppet warp and use contours. Look, and as I make it bigger, change the distance. Isn't that awesome? Yay. Um, I actually was using a contoured shadow like that for the flower. It's been one of my favorite ones uh, for flowers because I feel like it gives a neat effect. But anyway, um, that's it. I don't think I'm saving this layout because honestly, I'm not in love with my pattern choices. <laughs> but, but at least I was able to show you how to create these really cool shadows. Um, have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed Tutorial Tuesday. Bye-bye.